Resident Evil 2 The Remake was released early this year in January by Capcom. Since it was announced after its release, it has received immense praise for the experience it was able to offer. Not only were the graphic capabilities amped up from its original release in 1998, but the narrative and overall aesthetics provided an immersive experience that hindered my progression in the game for almost an entire year because I was so scared. That could have been because I am easily terrified and kind of a wimp, but I will instead choose to give credit to the game's design. Okay, so to explain this game in one sentence, it's a third-person perspective zombie horror survival game. In reality, however, the narrative is evoked based off of previous franchise narratives, sparking a huge twist that changes the entire situation. There is an ideology of corruption with dangerous government experiments that infected the entirety of Raccoon City, as well as creating dangerous bioweapons. This twist is what makes the game feel a lot less cliche and much more engaging. But what's more important than the captivating story is how it's actually implemented into the game. A lot of the story is embedded throughout the environment with the use of journals and notes and signifiers, as well as discourse with the names of specific zombies being unique, such as liquors. The transitions between the enacted scripted events and meaningful linear gameplay that still depends heavily on the player's input is flawless through the use of puzzles. There is hardly any disconnect from the experience, as well as the clever implementation of UI screens, being maps and papers, checking your bags, and saving your progress through a typewriter, and so on. All of these narrative techniques made the game feel a lot more real and so much more immersive. Moving on to the aesthetics. Yes, the game does look really good with its illusionism, but it also feels perfect in every way, creating a wonderful sense of immersion. The semiotics are also cleverly designed. Signifiers are subtle yet effective, such as the light in an alleyway, signifying point of interest, the player character changes its walk cycle, indicating its health, and small video game symbolic icons, such as ammo amounts, that keep the screen clear and more immersive. The screen type is also a seamless multi-screen type, with connections between a large world being smooth with no disconnect or loading screens. Not only this, but there is continuity with the NPCs, because they are very dynamic. One zombie has been chilling at this window for ages, and this guy's poor body still lingers here after I've killed him forever ago. Don't even get me started on this big scary guy who you can hear stomping if he's in a different room above or near you. It's genuinely horrifying. And this leads into the audio. There's transition between screen sounds and you can also hear the player character, which makes them a lot more connectable. Jesus Christ! And there's also music that follows the big stompy guy. This aids the player as to what situation they are in, whether it be a menu or if they're in danger. This game really did do so many things right, creating one of my favorite gaming experiences. Also, from a designer's perspective, I can admire how much attention to detail was added in this game. The narrative is so intriguing and well implemented, and the aesthetics make it so much more real. Resident Evil 2 is an extremely strong game for its immersion.